What? You're still here? Well, we might as well learn something while we're here. All right, we're going to do the right side of the screen today. Um, a quick note. Um, I don't know if I touched on this or not. The looks like a little locator button next to the hand. If you hit the locator button when your screen is over here, the cursor is an arrow. Um, and what that allows you to do is click on the backdrop, highlight and select one image, select two images or whatever. And you can do that. Um, if you want to go the opposite route, you hit hand and that gives you a hand you can put on screen and you can move the, screen, the whole screen around. And you can flip back and forth that way. Okay, I don't know if I did that or not before. All right, the next one down here is this drop down menu here. It says creator on USB. That is my device that's currently set up and ready to go right now. Um, if you remember, right here it says creator. Back in your settings screen, uh, right here, it says device name, creator, edit device name. That is where you can come in here and type in Lonnie's machine, hit confirm. Now I changed my name to Lonnie's. Next it out of the screen, over here it says Lonnie's on USB. So you can name it whatever you want. Um, most of the time you only run them one device, it doesn't really matter. But if you're running a couple of them, you can name them, you know, number one, number two, whatever. Um, and then uh, if you hit the drop down menu here, if you had more than one device on here, you'd be able to click on the one you wanted to use. Um, it's just like a printer in Windows. You can click on which one you want to use and send it. If you hit add, this is where you would add another device or you can change what you've currently got from USB to Wi-Fi, uh, all on this menu here. Okay, next is this right here. Just telling you right now that the 20 watt blue laser is installed in my, mach my machine. Um, I don't even know if they have uh, another one out yet. They were supposed to be making one that works on different wavelengths for different materials, but I don't know if it's out yet. But if you did, if they had it, then this would be what it is. And that's just telling you what's in the machine. Refresh, um, that you hit refresh and it will um, go out, look on the machine, see what's on the bed and bring you back a picture of it. Okay, right now there's nothing on the bed. You're looking at the grates. Um, if you remember, we bring our mouse over here, right click, hit hide background, and we're back to our working area. Autofocus, that's where when you have your material in there, you get your stuff edited, and you're ready to go, you hit autofocus, and what will happen will be as this. I want to switch over to, uh, I'm going to put a piece of something in the uh, laser, and I'm going to let you watch it autofocus. We'll pause here for a second. Okay, currently I have a piece of wood in the machine. Alright, this here is the print head laser. This is the piece of wood on the print bed. I'm going to go hit autofocus and you'll watch this move over, come over to um, the piece of wood and raise up and down. And what it's doing is it's setting the focal length of the distance between the material and the laser head so that you can get um, the laser to cut into the wood. A laser that's not focused is basically a light bulb. That's an easy way to remember it. All right, so let me get over there and hit it. Okay, I've hit autofocus. There it went. You really can't see a whole lot, but the, uh, the bed itself is going up and down to change the distance once it has found the focal length that it needs it'll move back and out of the way and now it's ready if I was to go hit print it'd be print whatever I have on the screen okay we covered that next you'll see here where it says note this is a free form field that you can do whatever you want and it don't matter what you're doing there 
Um, what that is is a uh, basically free form that when you take this image here and save it, okay, we saved say, say it as test. Um, so we do another image. You see all that. But we're starting new, so everything's fresh. But we go back and we recall the file that we had open. The one that we did it was called test, and our free forms back. So at any time during the process, you want to put mem information that you need to use in there. Like if you got to use a special kind of wood, you use a special mug, you use a special supplier. You sold five of them to Jim for fifty dollars a piece. Whatever you want to do on this particular job, you can put in there and it will be there when you come back to get it. This is also free form, so it can go, you can grab this corner here, you go make it smaller, you can make it larger. Um, and that comes in really handy for different things. Next is the materials list. Uh, we talked about that. You can put in there whatever you're using and that chart will be there. If I click on this bird here uh, and I want it to be this color, click on it and it will automatically take those settings, the 78 and the 225. Once I click off the, the board to the side, the image is selected. It's already got the, the things there. If I do this other one here, um, can make that one real dark, 100 and 100. Take off this hide. And watch these numbers over here on the right. As I switch the objects, they're already preset to print. So when I, I print this off, you'll have one that's a little bit lighter than the other one. Um, or if you want to set up your whole thing, you want them all to print the same, you come back here, make sure you got your little arrow, highlight everything, and then do your settings once. 78.225 and now 78.225 is for this one and 78.225 is for this one. That's how you change them all at the same time. Where that comes in handy is um, sometimes you're using text and text by default goes to one setting. Your images on there already it's been set to another in settings. Um, you're, you, you did this once before but you did it on a different kind of wood. The settings will all change and that's the easy way to change those. Um, while it's up there, um, if you hit ignore for processing and you get this particular eagle selected, you hit ignore for processing, see how he grays out? That means if I would hit print right now, it's going to print this bird here. It will not print this one. Ignore. Okay. The next line down is engrave, fill engrave, and cut. If you do engrave, you get just the outline of the image okay and it's got its own power and speed settings that you can set for that fill and grave that's the one where you can use the settings down here um, and that is basically the whole picture lasered and cut is basically doing the outside edge but it will um, be stronger um, your power rating speed can be lower. You can you can some number of passes. Enhanced cut, cutting here. When that's turned on, your little air pump will puff air down by the laser, and that's to help it um, keep the cut keep the cutting area clean and to enhance the cutting on it. Um, if you add breakpoints, that has to do with something we'll cover up later. Um, some of these have what's called line density. Um, you go up to 300, down to 20. Um, by default, I think it usually runs around 100. And um, I am not sure. I've been told that, that has to do with um, the printer equivalent of dots per square inch. But I don't know. I usually leave it. 100, 110, somewhere around in there. And left. Okay, I went ahead and changed the image um, for the next part we're talking about. Um, 
the ad break points, I got no clue on that one. I'll be honest with you. I'm sure it sounds intriguing, but I haven't messed around with it yet. Um, this is an, what's called a SVG file. Um, it's a graphics file, vectors file that um, has multiple parts to it. If you look down here in the layer section, which is the next section we'll go to, um, it has all different uh, pieces. So this elliptical line here, you click on it and it'll show you that that's where it's at. Um, and it breaks it down into detail all the way down the line. Um, but what this, doing it this way allows you to do is each one, we got this section right up here, um, we can have that change to fill engrave, um, regular engrave, cut. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with these. Um, you And you can also, um, there's a little scroll there. You can pick a part here. Say this piece here. Um, you think, eh, no, nah, I don't want that one. You can hit ignore for processing. It grays out. Now that's not going to be there. Uh, you got to go all around and do other stuff. Um, where this comes in handy is if you've got one of these images. Let me click off of this here. Say down here in the center. You can click there. You can delete it. You can ignore it. Um, whatever. And then you can come back with text and you can put a person's initials in here, a last name, whatever. Um, when you have time, you have nothing better to do. Grab an image. It's an SVG format. Bring it in. Play with it. Um, all kinds of stuff that you can do with it. Um, and that's actually probably a 30 minute video in and of itself trying to do it. But you can assign different layers with, by using these things down here. These are colors for different colored layers. Um, so this everything that's this layer here is black. I'm like, well, that's not visual appealing to me. I want to change that to yellow. Okay. Um, that's just a visual representation when you look at that image to know what layer that falls into what you're going to manipulate it for. Um, again, it's not colors. A lot of people get confused. Oh, you're printing all those colors. No, you can't. It's just for your visual eye. Um, this, I'm going to come back because we're almost done. Um, down here where it says preview, you hit preview and it shows you what your other canvas look like. We've changed it, so. Here's our canvas, now the one we're working on. But you can you could actually have three, four different things going on at once. Um, you can have uh, a project where you're going to print this, and then you're going to print something else, and then you're going to print something else. Um, they can all be in one file here. You can save different images on different screens. Okay, so I know we've gone through a lot of this. Um, and my goal in doing this was not to make you an expert on how to do this. My goal was to show you what the button does uh, so you have a general idea, so you're not out there totally lost. And now you can go back in and you can play with the, the system and, and, and try and make stuff, download an image, play with it, do what you want. Um, so you're not totally out in the dark. Are you an expert? No. Are you going to be an expert in a week? No. But it doesn't take much. I mean, a, a beginner can get in there and start cranking stuff out left and right. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not a beginner. I'm somewhere in between. It amazes me some of the stuff that I see some of these people do. Um, but, you know, they spend a lot more time at it than I do. And God bless them and give me something to shoot for. Thank you for being in this series. Keep watch. I'm going to do some other stuff. Um, check my YouTube page out. Like, share, and do all that other YouTube stuff. Um, and we'll see you next time around. Uh, hope this helps. Thank you.